Leos! Subscribe! What up, players? Wobot's Tay up in this mood. Got something a little bit different today. I got a request from Mofos4 saying that his cousin was getting into orcs and goblins, uh, getting into Warhammer, and asking for me to do a little unboxing video. So I was thinking, what could I unbox? What could I unbox from orcs and goblins range? I've got some some stuff like the the chariot sprue. I've got some of the uh, new boar boy sprue uh, boxes hanging around. But I thought, you know what, let's do something that every Orc and Goblin General needs. You might not want a Chariot, you might not want Boar Boys, but just about every General of a good Orcs and Goblins army needs some cheap little Night Goblins. And by cheap, I mean points-wise, since they keep raising their prices, monetary-wise, it's not a... Uh, Games Workshop. Take our money! Anyways, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, how many do you get in here? 20 Night Goblins, 1920, yeah, in this box, and I think it's fantastic because you can make goblins, Night Goblins with spears and or hand weapons and shields and bow and arrow. So there's all the options that you could want in in this in this box set for your night goblins. So this is a lot better than the regular goblin regiment set because the goblin regiment set only allows you to have the options for spears and shields or bows. It doesn't allow you the hand weapons. So you're gonna need to make conversions or chop some guys off at the hands, and it's a, it's it's a lot more difficult to make a regular goblin regiment with that if you just want a goblin regiment with a hand weapon which is pretty basic but that's a little mini rant so for every night goblin or orc and goblin general that wants a box uh, or a couple of boxes of these night goblins i say kudos to you because they're cheap they're a great tar pit unit the hand weapon and shield allows you to have a good cover save and a, a lot of great orc and goblin generals use night goblins to great effect plus you get to put fanatics inside them and they're really survivable if you give them the shields, uh, not shields, the nets option which allows you to basically raise their toughness by lowering the strength of any unit fighting them by one if you roll a two to a six on a dice. So I love night goblins. Night goblins I remember from way back in, I'm gonna say fourth, fourth or third edition, whichever one came in the box set with the with the uh, the high elves, the goblins versus elves. You could, there weren't even any orcs in that, but you got night goblins and regular goblins with spears and shields, and the night goblins had bows, and there was it was all it was one piece. So that's when I first got into the hobby, and I, I remember when I was getting out of the hobby, they didn't have these multi-part plastic sets yet. So I was really excited when I came back in and I saw these guys so really excited about it and um, and I thought oh man I want to just dive in and see what what Games Workshop's been doing since I've been gone and I this was the first thing that I put back together since getting back in the hobby after after leaving it for a good 10 years or so so I was really happy with the way it came out with the variety and the weapons and the heads and just the detail on them and you know you, you can you can get into all the new sets and how intricate they are with like the, the Savage Orcs and how detailed the new kits are and everything, but there's something just about a, a mob of... being able to get a mob of 20 of these guys in a box that is just when, when you set them up and you paint them and you see them on the table just makes my heart swell with green pride. Alright, so enough of that. Let's look in the box. First thing you get, of course, is 20 of these 20, milli 20 millimeter square bases in a bag, a little baggie. So that's what you're gonna put your guys on, usually. But what I do is I like to run my guys in big units. So I buy a lot of little regimental stands. And what those are are really long stands, usually eight, 80 millimeters wide. So you can put four of these guys on one. That way you can just line them up. If you see my Savage Orc video from uh, a little while back, that's what I'm trying to do with them as much as possible because I'm putting them in this huge horde. So you, you know, you want them. You, you don't want to be 
setting up like 60 to 80 of these little night goblins on the table and then having to move them one by one. And even if you have a movement stand, once a cannon or a giant blast template hits and you're like, okay, I gotta move 12, I gotta remove 12 of these guys, then taking them off one by one at a time and having them on the side in your little dead pile is just, it's kind of cleaner to me. It's a little bit more efficient when you have regimental stands. So that's something I learned uh, and I wish I learned it sooner rather than later in the hobby. So get yourself a couple of regimental bases if you can. You have two sprues in this box and they are not identical so let's take a look at the normal sprue quote unquote first and then we'll get into the directions a little bit after. So with one normal sprue you've got ten, ten bodies. Okay so You've got one, two, three, four, five bodies. Oh, is this six? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, you get 12 bodies. Six on each side. And then you've got these hand weapons. And I love these hand weapons because you can paint them all rusty and grimy, or like pieces of red wood with, with a bone or a little shard of metal put in. Then you've got these nets. You've got bow arms. Some of them come with just a left arm holding a bow, and then some of them come with two arms holding a bow as if drawing it. And then you've got these spears, which look pretty cool. They look just like um, pieces of of stone or wood or or tin, just lashed to a piece of wood. If if I was starting a new orc and goblin army to match the savage orc theme with the crystal crystal stones, I would have painted these spears, spear tips in that crystal scheme. So you've got some shields and some arrows. I'm going to flip the sprue around so we can see what kind of shield designs you get. Oh look, they're pretty much all similar. The angry bad moon. So we've got some bad moons with fangs, we've got a, just an angry bad moon here. We've got this weird one with no eyeball. And then on the other side, you've got pretty much the same thing. More hand weapons, more bows, more spears, and more shields. So it looks like two pretty much identical halves just flipped on the same sprue. So next, let's take a look at what I call the command sprue. So what you're going to get for this is you're going to get some more bow arms in case you don't want a command sprue. You're also going to get, this is the top of a banner pole. So for the flag bearer, this guy, because it's got, he's holding a, a pole with a top that attaches to the bottom of this. Or you can also use the banner that comes in the box. And what's great about this banner is that it's molded to fit on top, or to the design is already molded onto it. So there's no guesswork. As a beginning, collector or painter, banners like these that are molded on are fantastic, to quote Sean from Blue Table Painting. Let's see what else you get. You get more hand weapons, more bodies, and let's flip this around so we can see. This is your musician's gong. Got some mushrooms at the top here. So if you want a musician to bang this gong, then that's an option. This looks like the the weapon, hand weapon for a champion in the shape of a moon, of course. And then you've got one of these guys has just a regular body, but then the option to put what looks like a champion's head on top with this little little moon pendant, which is really cool. He's got little horns popping out, uh, probably made out of bone or or wood or metal or something. And more hand weapons. Here's the little gonger for the for the for the musician. And you also have a regular head if you don't want to have a champion. If you guys are if you're just buying one of these boxes to fill in the back ranks, then you glue on a regular head. Can't tell the difference. You also have this great champion's shield. 
which looks different because it's molded to look like the moon with some spiky bits on it. Okay, and then on the opposite side, you've got just more shields, more bows, more spears, more bow and arrow arms, and some, some more hand weapons, and the bodies. So let's take a look at the Night Goblin bodies that you get. They're really detailed and intricate. What I remember when I first came back, I thought how the fact that they each have a different expression was so clever and so great. And I love this guy, this screaming night goblin, ah, because his teeth are like little individual, like when you pick them out with denim stone or skull white against the black of his mouth, it's, it just comes out really well, looks really good. So I love night goblins, they are their number one, one of the number one regiments to get in my book. They look cool on the table when you've got a whole mob of them all painted up, based up, done up right. And the fact that they're, they're core troops, don't let that dissuade you and, and let you think that you can just, you know, slap on black, slap black paint on and pick out just like green for their faces and hands. Like really put in the work. Do, do some extra, add some extra touches like painting up these mushrooms or painting intricate designs. Like you don't have to get as crazy as this checkered helmet, or not helmet, but checkered design for the headpiece of the champion. But, you know, do, do, do something that will make your make your opponent think, wow, this is a really cool opponent that I'm facing who really takes the time to put detail into his core troops. Or her, if you're a girl. Ah. Yeah, right. If you're a girl and you're watching my video, uh, leave a comment because you should be watching like Justin Bieber or something. So here's some, not that girls don't play war games. Um, I'm just gonna stop talking right now. Is they have examples at the top for what each night goblin looks like. So here's a shield, a spear, spear and a shield, bow and hand weapon shield. And then the they show you for beginning modelers how to put them together. And it's sorry about that. Battery died. It's so easy to to just see. Oh, okay. Step one: get the body, put it on the base. Step two. Use either a shield arm or a bow arm on the left, a spear arm, or a hand weapon arm, or a little uh, a quiver arm on the right, or put the bow and arrow arm on. And it's it's just so easy to to see how how it's supposed to happen. They, they I wish they they meaning Games Workshop would come up with these kinds of instructions for more, where they show you this is the finished product, this is what it is, this is how you put it together. I think it was a really big success that they should have kept with other with other other kits. Champion, here's what the champion looks like. That's how you put it together. And the back is how to put together the musician and how to put together the standard bearer. Or using the alternate standard bearer or standard head. Putting it on the pole and then attaching it to the night goblin. So there you have it, just a sh short little review today on one of my favorite units in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. Orcs and Goblins were my first army that I ever collected. I remember breaking out the, the box set and thinking that this was going to be such a fun little game. What? Look at this little fanatic. Oh, that's, that's great advertising. Like, yeah. Who's that? What is that, dad? Or mom? Or older brother? Oh yeah, that's a fanatic. They don't sell it in this box. Let's go pick one up. <laughs> but I remember thinking that they're so characterful. The, uh, there was no real grim darkness of the Warhammer fantasy world back then. So everything wasn't all gothic and grim. Like the Empire had really bright colors. This is back when they were still doing everything really bright. And I remember thinking that you know, I'd, the, the High Elves just weren't for me, they were too clean, the Empire was just too bright, and none of the other armies really appealed to me, but when I when I opened the box and I took out these sprues, or not these, these guys, these are way more current, but I remember thinking that the goblins, the fluff for them, the just the feel of the models just suited me more, and once I really got into the hobby, then I'd, it's these guys were just my... my 
my favorite little guys ever. So, orcs and goblins. I hope anybody who has an orcs and goblins army appreciates them and likes them as much as I do and doesn't just math hammer it out in their head and because there's no way there's no way you can really get too competitive with these guys I don't want to go on a rant because that's a whole different story and this is just an unboxing but I love night goblins they're fun they're fun to paint they're really easy to build and maybe I'll do a war boss tutorial on how to do a whole regiment of them because you do them all at once you get them all out of the way and it's a lot better than painting up one by one and by one especially if you're going to do a big horde so if you'd like to see a Warboss tutorial, how to do a quick and easy unit of Night Goblins, then let me know and we'll paint up this unit together. I've also got some other great things coming up. I've got a how to paint a Demonette Warboss tutorial coming up. Some Malifaux things, a um, whole bunch of other stuff in the works. Some uh, spooky stuff for October and some more ogres. So thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, uh, like, let me know what you think of these guys and or what's your favorite core in your army for fantasy. All right, take care, talk to you later.